brain damage issues. And um, Angela and Jessica are looking for anybody who, who knows how to tie blankets um, because they're going to be doing that and selling um, those blankets with proceeds going to help offset some of the uh, medical charges and um, bills that Mike and family are dealing with. So if you have any interest in that, any skill in that, willing to learn that, um, chat up Jessica or Angela at the church today. That's everything I have done. We have other prayers, joys, concerns. Along with joy, um, we really need to keep Jim in our prayers. Um, I followed this guy up the sidewalk the other day to the courthouse, and I didn't recognize him from the back. And I was hurrying in to get on a Zoom, and it's like, good morning, so I'm going up the steps, and I hear Shirley, and it was Jim. Um, all bundled up, and his oxygen, and he was just... He said, you know, we basically been in lockdown since a year ago, October. And he said, we've had all this stuff hit. And Joy's first treatment, he said, it was horrible. It was from 9 till 11. I said, well, two hours, that's not bad. He goes, sure. 9 a.m. till 11 p.m. Mm. Oh, two trips to the ER that day to get her stabilized. Um, but he just, he, and for some reason, they're not finding the link, or he's not, to watch the church services. Hmm. I'm not sure how, but we need to make sure one of them understands that and gets on it because he goes, I really miss being at church. Yeah, because they they both do Facebook, <coughs> and I'm friends with both of them, so they should be Somehow getting the they, post. they missed it. Huh. But he still had his sense of humor. Um, his brother meets him. He drives her down for her treatments, and his brother meets him there, and they hang out till Joy's done, just so he has some company. But he was still joking, so he's still Jim there, which is, for all they've been through, that's amazing. But well, what, what was it last Sunday? Maybe it was you who raised the prayer, I think it was, that as we pray for these people struggling with their health challenges, other people we really need to be praying for are their caregivers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Others? Along with everything else, Tesh and Darren have been dealing with Logan is having tubes in his ears tomorrow morning mm. before the funeral. So they think that they're going to be able to put him in first thing, and as soon as he wakes up, Tesh is going to head to the funeral. It's a private funeral. So. And our, our kids came this close with ear infections to have him have that done, but. So we, we got lucky. They, I think we scared it out of them. You know, if you have one more ear infection, you're going to have to put tubes in your ears. They didn't have any more. Any others? And let's be in prayer together. Creator God, creating still. We gather here today to continue our Advent journey with our eyes turned toward Bethlehem and the events that we know await us there. And as we journey, we realize that life continues. We have those that we know are struggling in body, mind, and spirit, young, old, and in between. We pray for the caregivers for those who are struggling. We pray for those who realize their journey here on earth is coming to an end soon. And we pray for those who grieve the loss of a loved one. It's always difficult to say goodbye, but it seems like it's a little harder around the holidays. And so, Lord, as we celebrate the holidays, as we remember your
coming into the world once again that we might truly know just how much you love us. Help us to know that there are those around us for whom being joyful at this time is really hard. And it can even be hard watching others in celebration. So help us to be sensitive to that fact. Help us to share your love in so many ways, large and small, so that as we await that precious gift of the Christ child once again, we can share that gift with everyone we meet along life's way in a way that they will appreciate. And now in a moment of quiet, we would bring before you those special prayer concerns that we feel most deeply in our own hearts and minds this day. then with heads bowed. Let us join as in one heart and voice in the prayer of our Lord as we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture readings for today come to us from, similar to last week, from the prophet Isaiah. This week reading from chapter 9, verses chapter 11. And then... A few verses about the birth of Jesus as found in the Gospel of Luke. So first, reading from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7, we find these words. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy, they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And then reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, we find these words. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. 
And may God bless to our hearing and our understanding these words from our scripture today. Thank you. 